we're getting a new map in DMZ, which is awesome, but we're also getting a full wipe of all of our progress. And that kind of sucks. Leave a like on this video if you find it interesting and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. So let's take a look at what they've said. So this is the blog post. This is just the DMZ section we're going to look at today. I'm not going to talk about Warzone, the Warzone section, because it's all kind of, oh, we're just going to turn Warzone 2 back into Warzone 1, and I'm fed up of being negative about that. But anyway, let's look at DMZ, where sadly I'm not going to be that much happier. So first of all, enemy tuning. I talked a little bit before about how I was really hoping they weren't going to make DMZ easier. I made a whole video about why DMZ needs to stay hard but they're making it easier. So they said, in season one, the AI and DMZ were challenging, but the ramp up in difficulty was often steep, with some players getting overwhelmed. With season two, we've introduced a number of balance changes to adjust the types of AI spawning, the number of AI spawning, and the accuracy of AI at range, and much more. All of this should provide a challenging but manageable play space that still requires player respect of enemy combatants in the DMZ. So it sounds like they're not talking about fixing bugs in the AI. You know, I want them to fix the flying enemies and the enemies that walk through walls and the enemies that shoot you from underground. All of that stuff should be fixed. But instead, they're talking about, OK, we're going to make it so less armored AI is going to spawn. The number of AI spawning is going to go down. The AI are going to get less accurate. I actually showed off in stream today that you can stand still and the AI aren't that accurate. I know it's kind of a meme now that everyone's saying, oh, the, aim the AI just all have aimbot and they're super accurate from 300 meters away blah blah they're really not you can stand around the open and they'll hit you maybe one out of every five shots they're not very accurate at all but obviously if there's a lot of them that's still a lot of shots hitting you but yeah they're not very accurate they're going to make them less accurate i'm really worried that this is going to make the whole thing a bit of a cakewalk it's going to make the whole thing way too easy and therefore boring because if the ai aren't a threat then your gear becomes way less important. It's way less interesting to have like powerful weapons and good armor and all of that stuff, you know, self revives and all of that good stuff and a squad working together. Instead, you'll just be able to skip through the whole thing solo, get all your missions done super quickly and it'll be boring and easy. It seems like then the only challenge will come from PVP, which I don't think many people want DMZ to just be about PVP, but that seems like that's the direction they're going in. So it's a shame, hopefully, they're right and they haven't made it too easy and it's still going to be challenging but i feel like right now it's already at the sort of tipping point where any easier than it is now and it's going to be too easy so that's a bit annoying for me also talking about spawn points it says we're tuning some of the infill points across our mouse for improved early match experience based on gameplay data starting at a point in which your squad feels isolated or without loot and contract opportunities is not the best experience these tweaks should improve spawn points across the mode. If a second ago you noticed my lights went red, that's because somebody just subscribed. So you should subscribe too and like this video. But anyway, the spawn points are a bit of a problem. There are some spawn points where you don't get very much loot. You're quite a long way out in the open. There's one where you kind of spawn at some tents just north of El Maso City. Like, that kind of sucks. But I think the biggest problem with spawn points is that in some of them, another team can collapse in on you very, very fast. And if they've got sniper rifles, they can take you out incredibly quickly. And I know people get annoyed with that because people get annoyed when we do that to them. They don't seem to be talking about that here. So here they just seem to be talking about loot and contracts. So I'm not sure if that means moving the loot and contracts to be closer to the spawns or moving the spawns maybe away from the edge of the map, maybe having a few in the middle where people can get more loot. I'm not sure what they're talking about doing that, what these tweaks will be. But that would maybe make sense to let some people spawn closer to the center of the map, you know, maybe around the edge of Mount Zion and stuff like that. We'll see. The next one is mission difficulty tuning. So this one says data and feedback reinforced that the faction mission difficulty ramp was too aggressive for many players and at a demanding scale ultimately made it very challenging to unlock the second insured weapon slot, completing all tier three missions in season one. We've adjusted the overall scaling of difficulty missions as the tiers progress. Later tier missions will still be quite challenging, even for the experienced operator, but we believe more straightforward access to an additional insured slot will provide a better path forward for all players. So there's two ways they could go with this. One way I fully support, and that's for them to get rid of all of those missions where it's like, pick up 90 of these, take 100 of these to dead drops. Those numbers don't need to be anywhere near that big, you know, kill 30 operators from over 200 meters away using a sniper rifle. Why isn't it just five operators? You've proved that you can do it. Why do you need to do it 30 times? That isn't fun. That's just grindy. I don't like that kind of thing. If they're reducing the numbers for stuff like that so you can complete some of those missions without it being so tedious, that's great. 
But some of the other missions, if they reduce the numbers on, would actually spoil them. So like, there's that one where you have to complete eight unique contracts. There's only nine possible contracts in the game, so you have to do all but one of the contracts in one round. That's really, really challenging and makes you sort of form a strategy about how you're going to get it done. I've done it about four times now, and every time we've done it, we've completed the last contract with literally seconds to spare before we get to the final exfil. Now, if they reduce that to, say, complete six unique contracts in one game... That would be a cakewalk that would be super easy you'd be able to do that with minutes spare and it wouldn't be a problem at all it makes that mission very boring so they need to be careful about making these missions easier because a lot of them if they make them any easier they'll just be boring so many of the missions in dmz are already incredibly easy but they just take a very long time because they made the numbers too high. So hopefully they've fixed that side of it and they've not just made the missions more simple in terms of, oh, we don't want you to have to complete three weapon cases without dying because that's, you know, a really interesting challenge. Instead, just do one without dying. You know, so just get one weapon case because that would make it kind of boring. Then they talk about crashes. We know crashes are especially impactful in DMZ if you lose your items and contraband weapons as a result. Addressing these crashes is a priority of Season 2, and we're committed to increasing stability. Stay tuned for more specifics on this. I mean, this, yes, good, they need to work on crashes. For what it's worth, I haven't crashed for quite a long time now in DMZ. A lot of my friends who didn't used to crash are now crashing all the time, so it's kind of different for different people. But the thing that worries me here is they're not talking about what's going to happen when you do crash. Because what would be a good solution is maybe if, when you crash, all of your loot spawns on the floor. So then your teammates can pick it up to maybe save your insured weapons and stuff like that. Or made it so you can actually reconnect to the game if it's detected that you've crashed. That would be great. But instead they're just saying, oh, we're going to fix them. I don't believe they'll fix all of them, so we're still going to have this problem. Now we're getting on to the worst one. Well, possibly the worst one. You know, let me know in the comments what you think. The seasonal refresh. All new missions are coming in Season 2, including a refresh of your current faction mission progress and an inventory, contraband and keys, reset. We'll be detailing all the need-to-know intel for DMZ ahead of Season 2 in an upcoming blog. So I actually reached out to my Activision contact for this and they said, as far as they understand, like they're not developers working on this, but as far as they understand, yes, this is a full wipe. So you are going to lose your contraband, you're going to lose all of your keys and all of your mission progress will be gone. You'll be back to just Tier 1, unlocking everything for the first time just like you did originally so if you spent a load of time getting loads of grenade launchers from building 21 i've seen some people doing that you better use them all before february 15th because they're all going to be gone if you spent ages getting a load of keys that you think might be useful for future easter eggs or for getting the story lore and stuff like that like i've been doing all of those are gone now all of those are going to be deleted which kind of sucks if you've spent ages finishing all of the missions because you wanted to have a nice complete thing before they added like a new faction or a new tier um it's all going to be deleted so it doesn't matter anymore so some of those missions that i'm doing right now where the reward is a piece of contraband because i finished tier five in all the missions really early i think we were some of the first people to complete tier five in all of the factions and then after that i've just been filling up all of the ones that we skipped and now it's like well what's the point because the reward's just contraband which will also be deleted why bother doing any of them i assume all of your rewards like blueprints and operator skins and emblems and stuff like that you'll get to keep all of those but then you've got the problem of either all of those rewards are going to be the same next season so you're just going to be completing missions to unlock nothing or those rewards are all gone now and people who haven't completed them by february 15th will never be able to get them so i'm not sure what's the better solution from those probably the idea that no people won't ever be able to get those again and there'll be all new ones at least that's what's better for me because i've already got all of them but I don't know. I don't know what's better of that. I'm really shocked they're wiping everything. They didn't warn us about this when it started. They said it was a beta, but at no point did they say, by the way, we might wipe all of your progress. It kind of sucks. And the fact that they've called this a seasonal refresh, not like a coming out of beta refresh or something like that, there's no mention of this coming out of beta, makes me think this will happen every season. That at the end of every season, everything's going to get wiped. Which kind of makes DMZ feel a little bit less exciting to me, a little bit less interesting. But, oh well. Finally, let's end on some good news. Something good about DMZ, we are getting a new location. So it said, with a new exclusion zone coming Season 2, players will have a third option to choose from when deploying in DMZ. The faction mission refresh will provide new missions that send you across these destinations, including Building 21. We suggest you and your squad gear up for infiltration first. So when they say new exclusion zone, I'm assuming they just mean the new map that's coming to Battle Royale. We're going to get that in DMZ. And the interesting thing here is they said the new missions are going to be, you know, applicable to Amazon and Building 21 and the new map. So there'll be some missions that send you to each. 
that's a good thing. I was kind of expecting us to get a whole new faction that was just for this location or something like that. But at the moment, with Building 21, there's no missions that actually require you to go there. You can complete some there, like getting aspirin or whatever, or killing enemies, but you can't. there's no missions that require you to go there. It sounds like now there will be some, you know, some will say, oh, do this in the core room in Building 21, or do this in the helipad on a new map or something like that. So we are going to get some specific missions for them, and I think that's a good thing. The thing I'm most excited about Season 2 is just getting a new location somewhere new to explore maybe some new easter eggs i'm always hoping some new lore some new notes and things like that new places to work out how to play with them that's really exciting i can't wait to stream all of that stuff but all of this other stuff you know there being a wipe us losing all our contraband all of our keys all the missions going back to the start it does kind of make this whole thing feel a little bit more futile which is really annoying but let me know in the comments what do you think about all this do you think it's a good thing for the mode do you think it's a bad thing what are you excited about for the next one don't forget to leave a like on the video subscribe and i'll see you for the next one goodbye